And one thing I always try to do, and this is something you should very seriously think about. In my classes, you know, when I was uh, having, having uh, uh, you know, uh, students answer exam questions or seminar questions or whatever, you know, one thing I always guard against is when a student tries to give me the answer to curry favor with me, says, oh, that what a Nazi, I know this is what he thinks on monopolies and all that. Uh, I will say exactly the thing that he wants to hear, or I think he wants to hear, right? And that's not a sign of true knowledge. That's not a sign of true. True knowledge, at the, in fact, in, 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 my, in my exam question and seminar questions, I make sure that the question is worded in such a way that people must be able to explain opposing views equally with equal weight. And the example that I like to give to you, you know, that the TV series, The Practice, right? The, the real essential theme, you know, the tension in that series always is that you've got lawyers there who are trying to defend people who in their hearts they think, gee, this person is guilty as hell, you know? But the whole legal, you know, uh, principle is that the prosecutor prosecutes to the best of their ability, the defendant, the defending lawyers defend to the best of their ability, and that the decision is then reached by independent jury or whatever, and that is justice. Even if the defending, defending lawyer feels this person is guilty, God, am I letting quite often, you know, what has happened is that the person let off, has gone on and committed another crime, which adds to the whole tragedy of it, right? But the principle is this. You've got to understand and give due weight to opposing sides. So where I'm arguing against somebody else's point of view, I have got to make sure that in my article, I give that opposing view full and serious weight to say, yes, I've considered your views. These are your views and so on. But I disagree with them. To trivialize the opposing view is to actually be contemptuous of the opposing view and you will not change people's minds. And the whole purpose of writing, you know, is to change people's minds, to convince people who think otherwise, you know, that the view that you have, you know, is the correct view. You won't change people's minds, actually, if you don't give them full respect and full weight. That's basically my principles for writing, right? No. So this is where, this is where, you know, when I, when I, in one of the components I said is that when you write a story, right, you try to be balanced, you try to give both points of view. So if you're writing, for example, about uh, the health, health system in the country, right, you need to also actually focus, you know, on, on, on the fact that, uh, that there are, there are, uh, there are things that are happening, you know. Okay, I'll give you an example. You remember this case where you had very much publicized in Fiji with these two kids, you know, there's one kid called Jerry and one kid called Priya. Remember these kids? One of them had this huge head and was about to die and all that. People were saying, why don't we spend seventy, eighty thousand dollars send that kid for overseas treatment and all that, right? I think one of the kids was sent and, di and died. One wasn't sent and, and died anyway, right? So both kids, I think, eventually died, right? But then, I, and I wrote my article there, uh, who's to decide, you know, who to let live and who to let die, right? And I pointed out, yes, of course, the, you know, the, the public are concerned that government claims it doesn't have money to send these kids spend $80,000 on a kid to send them to, to Australia and New Zealand. It's the same problem still today on many, many others, right? And, and I pointed out the government has been wasting money left, right and center here. They, how dare they say you don't have enough money for this, right? And you can see government still wasting money left, right and center here, there, everywhere with all kinds of stupid things. And they still say they don't have $70,000 for that, right? But I said, okay, let's take this a step further. Let's say that government did set aside some money. It's going to come out of the health budget, right? Are we, what are we going to cut? Nurses' salaries, medicines, or what? Let's say in the end we do end up with, say, $5 million for overseas treatments. This $5 million probably will fund, you know, only about, you know, 50 people. Out there, we've probably got about 1,000 people whose lives could be saved if they could go overseas for medical treatment, right? The question is, who's going to decide who to, who to send and who not to send? And at some cutoff point, somebody will say, sorry, we can't send you, right? And, and, and see, this is the devil's advocate principle I'm telling you about. You know, you try and present both sides of the case equally. You point out to the, to the negative things about government, yes, but you also point out the very positive things, you know, and the real problems that people would face. If, for example, they were, you were on a committee, yeah, the four of you were on a committee, and a case comes in front of you, and you know that, say, 30 cases will come before you in a year, and you can only select, say, 10 for overseas treatment, right? Who are you going to say, sorry, you can't go, and on what basis, right? And what do you say to the parents of that kid, you know, who you tell, sorry, uh, we think that, you know, somebody else deserves this money more, not your child. Your child would have to die, I'm sorry. 
And you will reach that kind of a situation very, very quickly, right? I mean, there are some things in life, you know, where, where you know, it is possible to write the negative things, but also you can write the positive things, you know. It, I'm not saying you go all out and, and whitewash a, a government over some particular... Sometimes they may do something which is tremendously praiseworthy and all you can do is write something positive about them. You know, by all means do so. But uh, I'm sure your newspaper or your radio station, your television station will never be guilty of putting out 100% of those kinds of uh, positive whitewashing things. Eh? As you say, you know, good news, you know, it doesn't always make newsworthy stuff for, for the public out there. <laughs>